Hi, I'm Michael Wargo with Precision Aerobatics, and today we're going to do a video that you guys have all requested, um, and that is for me to show you exactly how I set my planes up from the minute I take it from the, the build to the first few flights to how I trim it out and mix the plane out to make sure it flies absolutely perfectly. Uh, these planes, for me, fly in a lot of videos for Precision Aerobatics, and I fly them in air shows, so they really need to fly very, very well. So, I don't take any chances, and uh, Steve, who is building these planes for me, does not take any chances, and sets everything up as clean and perfect as possible. Um, so, I've checked all of the linkages, and uh, let me show you here what I check for. Okay, if you look at the linkage here, um, and I do this with all surfaces, I've checked to make sure that this is exactly at 90 degrees, with a dead level trimmed surface. This is really important. Uh, PA sets the planes up. If you buy the equipment from PA, you should be able to easily achieve this. The, the servo arms are the exact lengths they need to be, and so are the, the horns. So when you get your PA plane, what really needs to happen is you need to go through one surface at a time, um, center out the servo, lock it into place, and then make sure that when this thing is level, that servo is at 90 degrees, exactly perpendicular. Now, one thing you may run into is that when you put the servo arm on, you can't really center it at zero trim. It'll be a little right or a little left. Um, believe it or not, this is uh, perfectly natural, and it's because the, uh, the control horn has an odd number of teeth. So this control horn will be, or the servo arm, will be dead level on one side and it will be just a little off on the other. They generally send two one-sided servo arms and if it's the double one, you can just flip it around to make it level. Sometimes it's still not possible. Uh, Steve had told me that there was one he couldn't quite get right, so we had to sub-trim a little bit. We generally don't like to do that, but sometimes you just have to. All right. I finished the build for Michael here. It's getting ready for his first flight. A couple things that I go over to make sure everything's as perfect as I can make it, as Michael wants it. The, again, he went over the flight control surfaces, the same with the elevator, 90 degrees when you set it up, and it'll make everything perfect. Make sure you lock in your rudder, just tape it together so it's not going to go anywhere. And on the rudder setup, the pull-pull system, again, you make sure the rudder's taped so it's not going to go anywhere when you set up the two lines and you can make your adjustments once the radio has been bound that's where you're going to make your final adjustment at to make sure everything is straight uh, the way it needs to be what about any of the glue joints anything like that do you look at it do you check it do you re-glue anything i go over all the joints that have been that i can get to uh, i make sure there's nothing loose there's nothing cracked in, in the shipping or anything which there hasn't been. The biggest thing on the front end with the motor mount is make sure you glue all the joints and all the carbon fiber connectors where they you know, put together and are attached to the fuselage. You're going to have to make some adjustments also for the canopy to fit and for the cow to fit, which is explained in the manual too, but you have to go over them to make sure they're, they're right. Uh, the one thing I want to say about these planes is the manual is perfect, so it goes together just the way it's supposed to. And the, the biggest thing on the manual is read the manual first. Read it twice, and then start putting it together. Dry fit everything before you glue anything. It's the best piece of advice I can give you. All right, we're looking down inside the XR61. Steve has just finished building it. Everything is nice and tidy in there and our batteries are plugged in and the radio is bound and we're ready to get started setting it up. In order to avoid making this video last 60 minutes, I'm gonna do a very quick version of this. I'm going to set up one flight surface for you um, and then you can uh, do exactly the same thing for every other one. In this case, I'm going to set up the elevator. Um, the first thing that I do is I sub-trim the elevator. Um, not a difficult procedure. We've already got the direction correct. 
I do all of my stuff on high rates to make sure I have 100% of uh, the travel available. Um, and what I'm going to do is I am going to dial in the elevator until it's nice and level. This is not a mystery to most of you. you most of you know to, to, uh, uh, to level off each flight surface before you uh, take off. But the first step is I subtract. Step number two is I go into uh, travel adjusts. It's a very important step. I generally use a meter um, and this meter will tell me when it's 45 degrees, 50 degrees and I match both sides. This is really important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deflect it fully. I am going to deflect the surface to get absolutely maximum out of it, which is right about there. I max it out and then back off a click to make sure we don't overdrive the servos. So. All the way up, we maximize its throw, and then level it off. What we're doing is we're setting its maximum mechanical travel. These are not rates. Rates happen later. So what right I'm doing right now is I want to be able to establish how much this thing can go and establish the physical limits of the servo and the surface itself. Now I'm going to do the same thing with down elevator. I'm going to hold down elevator and I'm going to max it out. And then I'm going to back it off just, just enough to where I see it coming back. Now what you're going to see is both surfaces should be pretty close to even. But there's a lot of factors that could keep one side going a little more than the other. If you want maneuvers to be uh, even as you're going through rolling harriers or things like that, you want the travel to be the same on both sides. You want it to feel the same. You want everything to be axial and, uh, and even. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the one that travels the least. I'm going to find out what that is, and I'm going to match the other one to it. So if I get 46 degrees on one side, I'm going to go to the other side and uh, see what that registers. If it registers 45, I'm going to make them both 45. Even though I have a little more travel on one side, it's this is what I use to set up the deflection on my airplanes. This is a, a digital angle gauge. I think I bought it Northern Tool or something, and then I glued it to a piece of ply with some rubber on the bottom to keep it from slipping. So basically, we're just going to set it on here, deflect the servo, and it's going to tell me the angle. Uh, the first thing we do is, is zero it out here. It has a zero function. Uh, I don't want to bore you with the details of that. You can use any kind of a pitch gauge you'd like, but that's how we set up the model. So it's sub-trimmed, and I've got the max travel set. All right, I've set up all the rest of the surfaces. Uh, the only one thing you should know is you need a little bit more. When you're setting up the ailerons, they're important that they're both the same, so you get a nice axial roll. In order to do that and avoid any differential, we want to make sure you've got maybe a half degree more on the low side uh, because of uh, the thrust's effect on the aileron. So we want at least maybe a half degree on the low side. And we're going to check the differential a little bit later and we'll use the radio to mix out any additional differential if there is any. Typically, we're going to go through a process of mixing and things like that uh, to mix out any coupling issues. I mean, PA, these planes sometimes take a year and a half or two years total in development, and uh, Sean, in the design part of it, tends to mix out, he tends to design out all the coupling. Um, just occasionally where I like my battery or where I think it flies best or something, if there is any sort of a uh, of little bit of movement, um, I mix it out, which I'll show you later. But I do want to make a, a, a statement about something that I don't think I've ever said in a video before. When these planes go in knife edge, and you get a really high alpha, if you see the plane coming back and forth, it's not coupling, it's steering. The plane is very slow and very suspect to, uh, or subject to, to winds, even low winds. And when it's that low, you just have to steer it. It is not coupling. I have the battery packs in and I have the plane balanced exactly where the manual suggests. Nine times out of ten, that's where the plane flies best. I occasionally have to maneuver a little bit uh, uh, 
based on some maybe airframe specific stuff or to suit my flying a little bit better. But for the most part, right on is the way the plane always flies best for me. Um, I never balance the plane tail heavy, never balance it nose heavy. And the plane flies best when it is completely balanced. I have put in the radio uh, the rates that I typically use to start a model, which is on 3D rates is 100% throw, about 60% expo, and I start with that. Um, I'm going to show you later the different rates I use and why. Um, tip number one when you're mating a plane. Um, if you want to do any trimming a plane, real actual trimming, I'm not talking about for level, level flight, I'm talking about trimming an airplane, you need no wind, you need low winds. So that's the best time to do it. Um, even if the wind is blowing um, with takeoff, I always take off away from trouble. In this case, I got a lake to my left. I certainly don't want to take off and, and have a problem happen right after takeoff because I have nowhere to bail out. So I'm going to take off left to right even though the wind might be blowing in a different direction. Uh, the next thing we're going to do, we've got it all set up here and we're going to get ready to fly it. The first thing we want to do is trim the airplane out and then we're going to check its CG. Something I really want to cover here is that Sean with PA exhaustively uh, searches for that perfect perfect sweet spot he spends a lot of time on it so when you read in the manual where that CG should be it is exactly where it should be uh, when you add a little bit of rudder uh, the, the plane won't pull uh, towards the canopy or tuck towards the gear um, he designs all that out and when he recommends this, the center of gravity that you should use you should fly it exactly there because even if you prefer it a little back or a little forward the plane could start having adverse uh, reactions to it. You should fly it right where PA tells you to fly it. And that's where I fly it because the plane does fly best when it's nice and axial and, and has no coupling and so on and so forth. Now, every airframe is a little bit different. Shipping, storage, uh, hangar rash, things like that can start causing little issues with coupling. A um, little aileron warp, uh, servos not centering, things like that can cause the plane to do some unwanted things. Uh, generally with my brand new models, we don't need any of it. So first thing I'm going to do is check the CG. Okay, now I'm up in the air. I'm going to try and trim the plane out and it seems like it's not requiring any trim at all. I'll do some real quick assessments of the plane. Seems to be flying uh, pretty well. Check the rudder authority. say it's got some authority. And now we're going to check the CG. Before we do anything, we're going to make sure the CG is just the way we like it. I've got it right on the spot that PA recommends. And right at this rate, it's perfect. Okay, in order to test for the CG, I am going to put the plane up at a 45. I'm going to roll it inverted. And walk it. And as you can see, it's got a slight arc towards the ground. That is absolutely perfect. I am going to check the plane for coupling and knife edge. And what coupling means is when I turn the plane on its side, it may have the tendency to pull towards the canopy or pull towards the gear. And again, don't confuse it with steering because steering happens with wind and again when we get in a very high uh, alpha knife edge configuration. So I'm going to go up and we're going to uh, test it and we're going to mix this out. Okay, now we're going to check for any coupling issues and see if it needs to be mixed in any way. Now we're going to go knife edge. And we are perfect. Okay, we're perfect on that side. I'm going to show you a couple more reasons why you want your plane mixed out very well. Uh, when you make very sharp turns with a really perfectly balanced aircraft, uh, you'll see that the plane doesn't want to fish around, the plane doesn't uh, want to move out in any direction. Uh, a plane that has really good uh, uh, flying characteristics and is balanced and no coupling will do that just perfectly. Um, with most of the other planes that I have, especially the foamies, they require a lot of mixing and a lot of things and, and they just have bad habits. 
but I'll show you what PA planes do well in this uh, situation. At this point, we're going to come straight down and we're going to stop. And you see how nice and straight at the bottom it is. It doesn't fish out, it doesn't do anything. Another thing is, if you're on knife edge or something like that and you want to make a turn, look how straight the aircraft stays. It doesn't want to do anything that's unwanted. And even coming out of one of those uh, inverted, stays nice and straight. Okay, in order to show you how mixing functions and what we're trying to mix out, um, I'm going to show you on a plane that will inherently need a lot of it. Um, most of the planes I've ever had, with the exception of PA, seem to need some, some mixing. mixing. I'm going to put it up in the air right now and we're going to show you exactly what we're talking about and I'll show you exactly how to mix the bad tendencies out of it. This is the screen where we're going to handle the mixing. Uh, this is rudder aileron and rudder elevator. The first thing I'm going to do is check for rudder aileron mixes. And, all right, we're going to turn it on its knife edge. And as you can see, it's pulling towards the canopy. It's turning towards the canopy and it's rolling out a little bit. So we're going to bring it down real fast. This radio is a Futaba. Um, now what I'm going to do is that was with right rudder. So when I apply right rudder, what I want is the elevator to move down. We're going to add minus 6% to see if we can get rid of that uh, adverse uh, pulling towards the canopy. Right now we're at 6% and I think we need about uh, half a percent more and that's going to do it. Now we're going to go back up and we're going to do the other side now. All right. uh, it is clearly pulling towards the gear uh, pretty badly actually. So um, it's literally making a loop towards the gear. And what that means is every time I apply the rudder, that plane is going to pull to one side, so none of my four point rolls, nothing. It was pulling towards the gear really hard. So what we want to do is when we hit left uh, rudder, what we want is we want to see, whoops, I'm gonna go the other way. Um, I think we're gonna be at eight or nine percent. So when we apply the rudder, the elevator is gonna go up and it's gonna help it pull towards the canopy. Now, the thing is, when you have these coupling issues, even if you're doing a point roll, every time you add a little bit of rudder, it's gonna it's gonna feel like you added down elevator to it, which is gonna make it impossible to fly those uh, maneuvers straight. Okay, she's still pulling. You see it making that loop. That's that's adverse uh, uh, effect from the rudder, and which we don't want. So we're gonna keep mixing until we get it right. And I'm already at eight percent. That's quite a bit. Um, we're going to dial it up to minus 14%, and that's that's quite a lot of uh, uh, adjustment to make and correction. All right, I think we got it here. Now on the right side, the ailerons were rolling in, or were rolling out, and on this side, the ailerons are rolling in. So we're going to uh, mix that out as well. We're going to go to a mix called um, rudder to aileron. And I've dialed in about 3% to give it a shot. Now on the other side, it's rolling in, which means those ailerons need to go down again. So we're going to probably have to move that in a positive direction. Whoops. And that looks about perfect as well. So we're done. We've mixed it. Another mix I check for, and I almost always add to my planes, again, with the exception of PA, because they tend to have all of that stuff designed out, is a downline mix. Um, if you're coming on a, on a downline, what ends up happening is the plane will, most airframes will want to balloon out of the dive. 
uh, when you want to tr uh, fly precision or you want to fly in, uh, in IMAC competitions or anything like that, these downlines are important that the plane stays on the downline. So what I often do is I'll take the, uh, the throttle and when I put the throttle to zero, I'll mix anywhere from one to two degrees of down elevator to keep that plane in a straight down configuration. All right, this is gonna be checking the downline mix. Okay, we're gonna put it straight down and see how it does. No throttle, it is straight as an arrow, absolutely straight. And that's what we're looking for. And what I'm gonna do is I'm making a throttle to elevator mix. And that means on this particular rate, which I'm not going to use on 3D rates, I'm only going to use on, a, uh, on the middle rate, which is what I call a snap rate. Um, we're going to put a mix that puts a little bit of down elevator into it. Uh, As you can see, I made the switch select, the flight control switch, my flight mode switch, and it is only on in the middle position. Now what you're going to see is a screen for differential. And what that is, is we need the plane to roll in a very axial way when I hit full ailerons when it's on its way down is how we're going to check it. So what we, we're going to do is we're going to take the plane up, we're going to fly it uh, pretty straight overhead and we're going to put it in a straight down configuration and see what happens. And if it's full straight down boy, she looks like she's just as as um, this plane is tracking absolutely as straight as it can. Um, there is no need for any differential. And differential is simply one aileron being a little stronger than the other. And it starts pulling the plane to the right or the left. Here's again what differential is. Here's normal. And when I start dialing differential in, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, decrease the throw on one elevate on one aileron to help it match the other one and that works right through the entire movement it's the differential stays through the entire movement of the servo but again I have these set to where they are perfect on both sides and PA planes are designed in such a way that they should not have any differential and in this case the straight down lines uh, even are not requiring any mixing on full throws, on full 3D rates, this is my elevator, my dual rates, I like to start with 100%, um, uh, about 60% expo for the elevator. Um, then on mid rates, which I call snap rates, um, I'm going to use 24% elevator and look at the elevator how much it's deflecting it's not very much the reason I have this rate is this is to fly precision and how I determine what that rate is I'm going to show you in a, in a few minutes is I really want the plane to be able to do about a 30 foot loop and no more that's enough on this rate to be able to fly precisely all right, now this is low rates. In low rates, I am going to set up with the same rate as our uh, snap rates. About 10% expo, only that much throw. So uh, full rates are 100% with about 60% uh, percent expo. The rudder, when we set the throws we set it to, to, to be as far as we can get it and full rates we're going to be at 100% I'm going to take the expo down to about 60 mid rates um, this is pretty standard for me I have 45% and I'm going to have the expo down at um, about 15% low rates we're going to have the rudder right at about 45% and we're going to have the expo right down around 15%. My aileron rates are at 100% with about 60% expo on 3D rates. My snap rate 
I am going to have the Expo at 60% as well. Now, the reason all the other rates were low and on the snap rate, my ailerons are fast is because it's just that, it's a snap rate. I want that quick roll rate, but I want the elevator and rudder to behave very precisely. Now, on my low rates, I am dialing the uh, ailerons down to about 65% with about 30% expo. And those are my starting points. And I'm going to go up and check them right now. The first rate I'm going to check is for the precision part of my flying, which is going to be the snap rate. And basically, I only check it like this. I'm flying straight at half throttle, and I'm going to pull up in the elevator. That is a nice, very tight turn. Um, it's a little too tight. You see how small a loop that's making? It's too small for my lowest rates. So we're going to bring it down. Do you see how tight a loop that made? That's all the elevator that was being deflected. So I'm going to take that down. Uh, right now I'm at 20% and I think that's going to be a magic number. Okay, what we have here, and you can see how little that deflection is, what we have here is enough to pull out of any maneuver. I mean, it almost could go vertical. So that's enough to pull out of every maneuver. However, the plane is very responsive and will fly very, very straight. Nothing radical. 3D rates are too strong. Now the idea behind these precision rates for me is so I could fly very, very, very nice, smooth, straight lines. And those rates are just perfect. Now I'm going to do a smooth snap roll. And I have exactly as much rudder deflection as I want. It's been very typical with the PA planes. But if I have too much rudder, the snap will look like this. You see how what a large barrel it made. And too little will look like that. This looks like a roll. But my snap rates are right on the money. And all of my you know, if I'm going to do any sort of a Cuban aid or any maneuvers like this, see how nice the rates are performing? The reason we want the ailerons fast in this rate is for fast aileron rolls. Now I'm in 3D rates, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the one and only test I really use when I'm flying in 3D rates. And that is, I want to make sure when I'm doing a rolling Harrier, it's not uh, too sloppy and soft. And that I can keep everything axial and not have to move my thumbs too much. As you can see, it's staying really nice. Um, and at this point, I'm feeling like I might need a little bit less expo on both the rudder and the elevator. So I'm going to bring it down. All right, I'm getting a much nicer feel out of this airplane right now. And I'm right now sitting at 50% expo on the elevator and rudder. And this is suiting me just fine. As you can see, it's rolling nice and clean. Okay, here is a, a couple more tests I do at high rates just to see how the plane is performing. I'm gonna do a knife edge wall to see if the plane wants to kind of fly out of it at all. Or what it'll... I over-rotated a little bit, but it seemed like it just held. Didn't have any adverse effects. We're gonna try it one more time. I'm going to turn the knife edge real quick. Dead straight. Even slow. Knife edge coming out. You see there's no coupling. That was dead perfect. The other thing is we're going to fly faster. And make sure that we can fly smooth on high rates. As 
you can see, it's very easy to fly smooth because I have enough expo in it to offset that extreme throw. So I think we're ready to go. And this plane is going to fly just the way it's supposed to. The one last little test is I, I like to hover the airplane. Um, and sometimes if there's a little too much expo, it gets a little funny. Um, but at this point, it seems like it's very easy to control and it's hovering really nicely. Sometimes with not enough expo or a little too much, you have to hit quite large corrections to get it to uh, straighten itself out. But this plane feels just about perfect.